Hey y'all, uh, I figured we'd do something a little bit different uh, for this video because uh, I think a lot of people mistake or can't, can't tell the difference between a, a Gibson Hummingbird and a Gibson Dove. So I'm just going to show you uh, and let you hear uh, a little bit of the, the differences and, and all of that. So the, the, this is a Hummingbird and the pick guard on this one is, is a little bit worn away. But on a hummingbird, you have a little hummingbird guy in there, right here. <coughs> You'd normally be able to see him. <laughs> and he's uh, sort of buzzing around the flowers. There's a butterfly up there. And that's the, the shape of the pick guard <coughs> is, is uh, very similar, but not identical to uh, a dove. And uh, a hummingbird, m uh, most of them are in this sort of, uh, I don't know what they call that. It, it's almost a kind of rust color but it's a you know heritage cherry burst or whatever, whatever they call that but most of them are, are some variation of this there are natural top uh, hummingbirds uh, and, and they still I'm pretty sure they still make them so this would have a, a spruce top hummingbird has a spruce top uh, the sides and the back would be uh, mahogany um, I know the necks depending on what era would be uh, made of different things like in the 70s they, a lot of them were probably three-piece maple neck and all that um, but uh, a lot of them most of them would have these what they call split parallelogram inlays in the neck um, during the 70s when uh, uh, acoustic guitar quality for virtually every company <laughs> kind of sucked um, they went cheapy and you sometimes see just a square block um, that's not to say there aren't great uh, 70s acoustic guitars. There are. Um, I've, I've been thinking about getting a, a 1970s Guild, you know, F Jumbo or a D, uh, 40 or 50. But um, for the most part, uh, those are ones to to get cheaper than, <laughs> than other eras. Uh, just because the economy was uh, in the tank and uh, guitar companies were suffering. So quality suffered along with it. But... Nevertheless, um, you'll, the, you can't really tell the difference between a dove and a hummingbird just by looking at the inlays because uh, a lot of them are the same, those splits. And, and even doves, I think, had blocks during the 70s for part of it. The other thing is uh, the bridge is uh, nothing fancy, really, just uh, your standard bridge. Um, so that's a, and a lot of hummingbirds have uh, Grover tuners. They come like that. They're not replaced. Uh, like that. Crown inlay in the headstock for a hummingbird. So let's take a dove. Now most of my, my dove is a little different than the typical dove because a typical one is a natural you know top not stained you know natural top uh, but mine is sort of a tobacco burst finish and uh, the ones that are natural top would have most likely red back and sides uh, this one is, you know, burst on the back and the sides too. Uh, inlay split, split parallelogram, inlays just like the hummingbird. I put a little uh, piece dove over the <laughs> truss rod cover, but an, a regular dove would have a blank one, or it would actually say dove on. It. You got uh, crown inlay on the headstock. Uh, this one, I don't know if all um, doves. That's a good question. Uh, if they all have gold hardware, but mine does. Uh, the the I don't know what the the prices are these days. Uh, I suspect a hummingbird might even cost more than a dove now, especially used. But um, the dove was actually the higher end version, more expensive for, for a few reasons. One, the, the the dead giveaway of a dove is it's got a dove not not painted on it, but that's actually inlaid. If you can see it, he's got a little yellow beak on and eyeball and everything. Um, so when you see the big white blob on the pickguard, that's dove. Also, the, the bridge has dove wings, and it's sort of, you know, shaped like that. The pickguard is slightly different shape. I don't know if I can get both of them in the shot, but, <laughs> but I, I really can't. But those are the, the two pickguards. They're similarly shaped, but not quite identical. And you can see the, the bridges are different. Um, the, the, the main difference, though is uh, 
on a dove, it's, uh, these are maple back and side, and uh, instead of mahogany. Now they, they do, I have seen doves that are mahogany, and I think I've seen doves that are rosewood. So they do limited, you know, runs of those things. But uh, most, the, the, the defining sound really of a dove is, is maple. Because, uh, well here, let, I'll play, there's a lot of sustain, a lot more sustain, in uh, a mahogany guitar like a hummingbird. And, and uh, that's, I should mention also, I've seen hummingbirds that have maple back and sides too. So it gets confusing. But if, if you listen to the... That's a really deep, rich... I mean, that'll ring for days. That just sounds huge, doesn't it? So you go from that, which is, you know, fairly booming, to uh, a dove, which is not really. You can hear it right away. And you hear how it decays a lot quicker. It doesn't have the sustain. In fact, um, my own personal preference uh, on acoustic guitars is to have really no sustain at all. <laughs> and that's why I, I favor uh, maple-bodied guitars. Like a dove, I've got a dove that's maple. I got a J200 that one's maple. I got an Everly Brothers that's maple. Um, the, the the Martin I've got a Martin T41 that's rosewood back and sides, and uh, the Hummingbird is, is mahogany. So kind of got all the bases covered. But but the, the in terms of the sound, you can I I, I can really tell the difference between. Uh, difference between the two uh, just with a couple of strums just in in the uh, how, how much sustain there is so um, stones would have used uh, a hummingbird for the for the glory years of their uh, acoustic playing, you know, Beggar's Banquet. In fact, going back before that, the, the acoustic they would have used on Satisfaction <clears throat> was a hummingbird. In fact, there's pictures of the session when they recorded uh, Satisfaction and those other ones. And Keith's playing, you can clearly see he's got a hummingbird. If you go all the way through the, um, you know, the One Plus One, Sympathy for the Devil film, Nick is on a hummingbird. <laughs> Um, in fact, in, on some of the more recent tours, Mick is using uh, Hummingbird, so he's kind of stuck with it, I guess. I think uh, Keith goes through all kinds of different guitars, and I know he's been playing Martins in recent years. Uh, but the, the defining sound of Stone's acoustic stuff is, uh, is a Hummingbird rather than a Dove. Um, I really, between the two of them, I prefer the Dove, so I use it uh, for a lot of Stone's stuff. But uh, the purist would use uh, a hummingbird, probably, uh, instead of this. But those are really the differences. The, the dead giveaway is this. When you see the dove in the pick guard and the little dove wing, I guess they're dove wings? Are those wings or are those little doves facing each other? I can't tell. <laughs> it almost looks like a mustache bridge from uh, a 200. And then on the back, uh, a dove has a strip down the middle, whereas a uh, a hummingbird doesn't. Just a uh, nothing down the middle of the back. So that's the difference between those two. A lot of people have asked the question, and hopefully now you know. Good luck.